Hi everyone, welcome to Anne Jotinitz, episode 23, my one year podiversary. Welcome! So now it's time for a little celebration since it's it's been a year since I uh, released my first ever knitting podcast episode. Um, if you are new here, my name is Annina. I come to you from Finland, where I live with my family, my two little boys and my husband. And um, yeah, this is my car crafty corner on YouTube. Um, thank you so much for coming back if you are returning and welcome if you are here for the first time. Um, wow, it's been a year. Um, <laughs> I never thought that I would make it into episode 23. Um, as you might hear uh, again, <laughs> it seems to be, uh, it seems to happen a lot, lot these days, um, but my my voice uh, is not a hundred percent. It's been three weeks uh, since the last episode, and then I was recovering from a regular flu, and this time I am recovering from the from the monster COVID. Um, for me, it wasn't bad. I'm just left with this stuffy <laughs> voice, but we'll we'll try and and cope with that. Um, first of all, I noticed a little rush in my subscribers, so thank you so, so much for subscribing and I think that's also a thanks to Selma, Little Big Knits. She gave me a little mention and I think a lot of her followers came here too, so thank you for coming. And um, I hope you enjoy. Um, let's get into finished objects. So it seems that if um, if I'm making announcements on public, if I give you some promises, I manage to keep them somehow. So um, here is my finished sweater. This was started back in June last year. So it was a long process. Um, I will put a picture here, me wearing it. Um, I'm not feeling like standing up because, you know, I'm well seated here. So that's, that's that. So I did the whole process using 5.5 millimeter needles, I think, or fives, maybe fives. Uh, the yarn is fingering weight. And it only took me like uh, 250 grams to make this old sweater, and this is size large. I absolutely love the drape. It's very flowy, and I've been wearing it. I think I finished it a week ago, and I think I've worn it every day since then. So it's been a success. I will link my Ravelry uh, project pages uh, down below. So if you want to check anything uh, about the yarn or the needles or whatnot, um, you can find everything that I talk here um, down in the description. And also I will try to link and, um, and share notes uh, on other projects that I'm talking. I feel like I'm, uh, <laughs> I think I'm, I feel like I'm planking out a little bit. Maybe it's uh, this little brain fog <laughs> that is, uh, leftovers from the, the little disease that we had. Uh, we actually had it the whole family, so I was the first one and then the rest followed. And yeah, um, lovely Easter holidays with the whole family indoors. Um, but yeah, that's that. Um, yeah, let's con continue. I finished another sweater. Um, this is a short short sleep one, and this is my bayou pullover. It's a bit crinkly. Um, here, 
here you can see the twisted rib uh, details. Uh, this is my own design. I have shown it before. I will show show it again, I think, at some point. Um, I have almost finished writing up the pattern. It still needs a bit, uh, bit of tweaking, but because we have been at home for whole family, uh, it wasn't possible. So I'm hoping, um, I'm hoping to get on it later today. Uh, today I'm home alone. So yeah, the yarn is Karma Yarns Helliki Tweed, and I just absolutely love, love, love the yarn. And the colorway is called Honga. And the name Bayu was, um, actually it was invented by my sister. Uh, she, she suggested it to me and I immediately thought that that's very fitting because of the little nips that we have in brown, white and black. And I think it, it reminds me of, of the, the furry catkins uh, of a willow. So yeah, I'm really happy I did finish it. Um, I was cursing myself a bit because of the, the detail that I put into this. So the, the twisted rib, it's also um, like small cables. So you twist and you cable and um, it was a lot of work. But when I um, when I was on the on the bottom ribbing, I actually started enjoying it. I was like, not all knitting should be like speed and um, like knit 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 and get everything done fast. I was just like taking few stitches at a time and just working my way through, and actually didn't take that long. It's a very intuitive um, intuitive chart. And this chart is, by the way, from the book uh, Japanese Knitting Stitches, um, not the Japanese Knitting Stitch Bible. And um, yeah, I I have I have took I have taken the ribbing uh, from that book, and I I thought that it finished off well this design. Um, I have. Um, played around with the raglan increases, so it's not the regular raglan. I have talked about this before, sorry if I'm boring you. <laughs> so it starts off uh, as a regular raglan wood, but then it goes into the armpits in a bit of a different ratio. Because I find that raglans don't often fit very well, they go very uh, either they go like into the armpit or I don't know. So because uh, of my background background in sewing, I I thought that I would try to mimic the shape. What would you what you would do when you are sewing? So yeah, I finished it, and I'm hoping um, I'm hoping that the test call will be be out in the next two weeks but we'll see what happens i can see that my uh, voice is um <clears throat> it's not the best i don't know if if it will hold until the end i'm i'm hoping um i was teaching yesterday um uh, my knitting class and we were wearing masks and i was talking for two and a half hours and i i really felt it it wasn't it wasn't nice but let's move on um, I want to say something. Um, my viewer Desiree asked uh, in my last episode if we will have a cake for the anniversary. So I made a cake. Or uh, I did lemon meringue pie. It's delicious, by the way. And this is to celebrate my one year in podcasting. Mm. So good. I'm not gonna eat it now, but I just wanted to show you. Um, I made it myself uh, from scratch. So we are uh, celebrating today, and later in this episode, I will I will give you a little gift. Um, so stay tuned until um, 
towards the end of the episode. I will then um, want to thank you, my dear subscribers and, and uh, friends, uh, with a little gift. Let's move on. Um, I don't know if it was the quarantine or the the spring clean vibes <laughs> that I've been getting, but I dug out a very very old whip. Um, it it is from the same era <laughs> this this sweater, so probably last summer. And I finished a pair of socks. <laughs> These are my Titus socks. And I already had one um, finished sock and one uh, nearly whole leg of a sock. And I was going through my whips and I was like, this pair has been there for so long. It doesn't take too long to make or to finish. And so I did. I finished this sweater first. Then I took out these socks and I finished. I think that a, a deserves a little round of applause. Um, yeah. Um, why I did... Uh, not finish this sock sooner is because the pattern and the yarn they just don't match. Um, I could put some pictures of my test knitters um, making these socks. So these are Titus, Titus socks by me and um, as you can see it's much better in more lighter and solid yarn. You can actually see see the patterning. I dropped something, I don't know what, what was it. It was my uh, whip. <laughs> um, so uh, I started to make these socks in another yarn because I wanted to showcase the pattern more. And so I left the original pair lying in a bag. Um, but now, now it's finished. Uh, they are made with uh, hand dyed yarn and I have dyed it myself but it just didn't work with this, this particular project. I have dyed, um, it's a 100% wool base. Um, it's kind of tightly plied. I know they, were, they won't be like sturdy socks that you can wear in shoes, but I thought I would make house socks, nice and warm house socks for myself. These are definitely very warm and fluffy um so i will put them in the box and i will later this year give uh, them for me as a present so i did last year the whole box of socks 12 pairs but i don't think i'm going to make as many pairs this year but i i thought it's nice to have it's nice to have like two pairs or three pairs of fresh socks um, at the end of the year. So that's my third finished object and my last for today. But I do have something else to show you. Um, I also have a half finished object because I've been on a sock kick. I don't know, I, I've just, I've been doing really well with my, uh, my whips, I've been chucking them along. So, here is the sock uh, made from Mondim. I have shown this uh, to you before. I don't know if it was the last episode or some of the episodes, and I can't even remember. Maybe I was doing the heel already, but here it is. So just a basic, it's not really like vanilla, but it's two by two ribbing, uh, three by one rib along the leg and then on the top of the sock and just a basic, basic toe, nothing fancy about it. I made them on a two millimeter needles because this is Mondim and also not uh, any nylon or polyamide is in the yarn. 
So I wanted to make the cage very nice and dense so that they would hold up well. And I've heard nothing but good things about this yarn. So I'm really, really happy to try this out. Um, I actually don't have the other one here, but I uh, took the advice from wise people and and um, I did cast on the second sock immediately. I have just done like a centimeter and a half of ribbing, but it's started and we are actually going uh, on a little mini holiday with my husband this weekend. So I'm taking the sock. So I have something easy to work on. And what else? I will probably tell you later this episode. But yeah, I also have a half finished object. So the next thing is, um, you might remember if you saw my last episode that I was showing this triangle sock pattern that I was working on. And I was saying that it's tied a bit tight and I can't really get it on my foot. And here it is now. <laughs> It did not go on my foot. Um, so yeah, it was too tight. I blocked it, it was too tight. But I didn't want to rip back because I had already cut all the yarn. So I had like individual pieces of yarn and I had a load of them. So what I ended up doing, I was just like making a, making up a little um, thumb um, it does. It doesn't have the gusset because <clears throat> this was supposed to be a sock. So I just cast on few stitches and did did like a, a ribbing uh, for the hand and then did the thumb. So uh, when it's off um, off my hand, it looks well. It's very weir weird of me trying to show this off. Um, so it looks pretty a bit strange when it's not. Uh, on my hand, but I think uh, when I'm wearing it, it looks fine. And actually, I really like the fit of it. Um, the school run uh, fingerless mitts that I did um, a couple of episodes ago, uh, when I was a bit hesitant about the, the fit, they ended up um, <laughs> going to my husband because they were a bit too big for me. Uh, this is much better fit. Uh, it's snug and the hand part is not floppy which is um kind of um essential when you have a mitt that you want to uh, use your hands for something i think i finished these the day after i filmed last time and yeah then i forgot about them because i had other stuff to do but i'm still thinking of making the sock um what i will do i'll just do the regular way what I always do that uh, with my gauge I do have to add stitches uh, for the color work so that it's not too tight just it's just the way it is and I was trying to be smart and <laughs> just increasing the needle size but that didn't work for me it might work for some else but uh, we are heading towards the summer so it's not very um, it's not very essential for me to have these right away. I will work on them when I have the time. So that's, that's that. You might, uh, think that I have done a lot and I, I have done very much, but that is thanks to the quarantine and I was trying to <laughs> keep my sanity, uh, with two little rascals running around um uh, we call uh or i call them tornadoes because that's what they are they are like destroy everything <laughs> they are lovely boys but oh boy they have energy i don't know if it's uh, annoying to you but i feel like i have to constantly like push my voice so i'm i'm feeling that this won't be a long episode as i thought but um we'll move on to the next uh, whip, which is my vertices unite. I showed you in this, I showed you this in my latest episode, and I had then done the the section two, which is this one, 
And now I have done section three. You might not tell from the distance, but I had a bit of a yarn problem. And that was that I was running out of yarn. I had no idea how much this, um, this section would take yarn um, because I didn't read the instructions or the, the pattern. It says it in a pattern. Um, because I was using leftovers, I was just like, okay, this is a, a big enough uh, nugget of yarn or ball of yarn, and it must must be enough. It was not enough. Um, this section took me 62 grams of yarn, and I was halfway when I realized that this is not ending well. So what I started doing... I started striping. Uh, I found a very similar colored um, sock yarn in my stash. It's this brown. You can definitely see that it has uh, a change of color here. And I gradually striped, um, I think I did one, like two rows of each color, and then I did four rows in between with the with the color that I had more of. So I did like a little bit of like a fade. But yeah, I'm really happy that I managed to make this whole big section. Um, now there is only these smaller sections. So when the inspiration strikes, um, I can, I think I can um, make good progress with this, this, um, Sure. I did start the section four. I had this uh, variegated yarn and I hated it. I, th I think that the contrast is just so big that it doesn't look good. And I didn't take it all out because I wanted you to see it. Um, but that's, uh, that's what killed my motivation. Now I'm taking it out. Um, I, I'm kind of sad that I didn't use this color with the very dark green in the beginning, because I think it would have looked nice with, uh, like paired with, with the dark green, but I'm thinking I'm just going to use this then, uh, on the smaller section. So there is going to be, uh, a section here, uh, with solid. I think I'm going to use this golden yellow mustard uh, color that I made my uh, t-shirt out of. Um, it's this golden here. So I'm thinking I will do the triangle in gold and I'm using this uh, in the little stripy section with the dark green. So so that I can incorporate, because I really like this yarn. It does have all the shades um, of green and yellow and, and also rust. And it's it's very nice. And I thought it, it played well with this uh, color scheme, but I didn't plan out my colors well enough. So a lesson learned. Um, I'm, I'm thinking that I will Definitely make another Vergis Unite at some point. Not for myself, but I have a um, recipient in mind, so I know better now. I'm actually doing. Um, I'm actually writing into my uh, project page on Ravelry all the the yarn amounts so that I know with, uh, how much yarn each section takes. So I won't um, do this again. But yeah, I did that whole big section. It took me, I think, two days, three days. Um, it was actually a lot of knitting. I didn't expect it to be because it looks so harmless, like a little rectangle. Um, but it took a long time. So that's my old whips. Um, because it worked so well that I showed you uh, my plans. So. I haven't touched the, this um, 
this project since the bringing out all the whips episode, the whip parade. But I will show it to you now because I'm planning on taking also this whip to uh, our little weekend trip. We are going to Helsinki, which is the capital of Finland, and it takes us four hours on a train. So train knitting, uh, that's definitely a thing. So I'm planning on taking also my cardigan. So I have both front panels here. I have done the back panel and this is my own design that I started a year ago. And now that I have, um, now that I have gotten more, um, experience, uh, in the last year, I, I'm kind of bummed that I started from bottom up, uh, because it's much harder to write. Um, it's, um, <sighs> It's much more delicate uh, construction what because I have these um, front panels that are decreasing upwards. So if the row gauge doesn't match, it's very hard to, you know, match the pattern. And that's a pain to write uh, for ten si uh, nine sizes. So I've been banging my head against the wall with this one. But I really, really, really want to wear this cardigan, so I'm, I'm planning on making it now. So here you can see, um, I have twenty centimeters of the front panels made, and the next time you'll see this, it has grown. I promise. So that was just a little, um, a little promise that I wanted to make to myself, and because now it's public, I'm most likely to hold on to that new cast ons i do have two actually three one of them is a design and two of them are just um pleasure knits um few weeks ago um amanita was I think she's um, she's a designer that has been on a break and she was coming back into designing and um, she has a lot of lovely, lovely patterns and she had a one day offer that she uh, gave her patterns for free, which was fun, fantastic. And I actually had already seen this pattern before and I was in a lookout for a summer tee or a summer top, no, a t-shirt. And um, when she had this uh, offer going on, I grabbed myself the plant lady tee pattern. And this is how far I've gotten. It's a bottom-up construction. It has this lovely lace, uh, leafy motifs. That was a bit awkward. Um, and um, yeah, I was thinking of going a bit cropped. This is like a full length uh, t-shirt, but I was thinking that I will do like a 30 centimeter body. So a, a bit of a cropped, so high waisted skirts and jeans and shorts uh, could go well with this. And if I uh, have like a regular uh, waist, jeans or shorts or whatever I could easily put like a tank top underneath and it would work. The yarn for this is knitting for olive, the, the pure silk. And this is in the color sunflower. Yep, the sun, sunflower. And I already ordered this last summer um, because I had plans. Um, but they never <laughs> came to life. And so I wanted to use use this lovely yarn that I had. Um, this is my first experience uh, working with 100% silk, uh, as in yarn. I have been sewing some silk garments before, but yarn, um, 
it's it's really not stretchy at all. It's very um, stiff. The fabric that it creates is very nice and flowy. Uh, I have seen people using this double stranded, but I'm using just like a single strand because I want this to be like an airy, um, like suitable for a hot hotter days. It doesn't really get that hot in Finland, but you know, something loose fitting and 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 flowy. Um, that's my plan. So I do really enjoy the the fabric that it, it creates. It's um I think the the biggest thing is that you have to you have to unwind it from the ball a bit because it just like it feels like it snaps if if you you're pulling it too hard. So that haven't hasn't happened but it's it doesn't really like run so smoothly on the ball. It might also be because of the structure of the ball. Um I'm not really a big fan of these disc type of of um balls because when when you work from them and you have less and less yarn if you are working from the inside it comes nicely and then when you have like these donuts then it falls apart but i feel like the same thing happens uh when you wound it off uh from the top and especially this very fine and tight like it's very it's very fine it's 250 meters per 50 grams and it's very fine fun yarn but it creates a very lovely lovely texture and this is i think my third uh whip that i'm taking taking to my weekend away some of you might think that i'm crazy but um if you have been here for a long time or uh for a period of time you know that i get bored very easily so i need to have something that inspires me the whole weekend and there's a lot of sitting in a train and 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 yeah so i will definitely need more than one project to to go with me so that i won't get bored um i was saying in my last episode that i could do like a little recap of of uh, my knitting journey so i thought that i would share a little bit how i became a knitter and i do explain this in my first episode but it's been a year probably you won't remember and most of you haven't seen my my first episode so so i thought i i'd do a little um recap so um i have learned to knit as a child um like i think in in most nordic countries we do do learn uh, to knit in school um i had experience in uh, like cross stitching and and a bit of crochet before school because my my both of my grandmothers have been very um they've been very uh enthusiastic crafters both of them knitters and my my uh father's mother she has done these huge um um like it's not a painting like pictures like huge pictures in cross stitch she has done um um a million million pairs of socks uh, in her days and my other grandmother who unfortunately passed already when i was nine she was a garment knitter she she made all these lovely cardigans and everything for us when we were kids and or small kids and um so i've already always seen uh people knitting and crafting around me i was never very very um into that actually but um, also the men, <laughs> men in my life, um, my grandfather was a shoemaker and my, my own dad is a, is a clocksmith and he also builds guitars. So I think um, 
all the craft things they just run in the family. I've been always more into sewing. I think uh, in school already we we start sewing um, on third grade, and so that was uh, that was more more like my type of craft because I'm impatient and I want everything now and I want them to happen right away. So sewing worked for me. Uh, we did the the first socks I think on fifth grade and it was a pain. Like I didn't have the patience to to learn the knitting uh, in a big group when there's one teacher and a lot of kids and you are doing heels and you're dropping the stitches and it was not fun. Um, I did make those socks. I think I gave them to my uh, grandfather. The other one was size 40 and the other one was size 45, I think. <laughs> they were not the same size at all. But I made them and that's that's how we learn. And then when uh, we went to high school, 7th, 9th grade, 7th, 8th and ninth grade, we had knitting in school. I was, again, much more into sewing. And me and the teacher, we really didn't get along. And we had to do like stranded color work. I was, uh, I think, 13, 13 and we did leg warmers in stranded color work. And we had to draw the the patterning ourselves on a like um craft paper and yeah not a success and i got such a low grade um uh, from that that it killed like it killed my my uh my inspiration to knit ever again i said i will never knit i will never become a knitter my mom my mom is knitting all the time every day she has something uh she's working on she has a very huge stash and she's always buying yarn and i was always like why do you buy so much yarn what do you do with so much yarn and um she knits everything socks shawls shirt like pullovers sweaters cardigans tops you name it she's done it um so i've always seen a lot of, of knitting but i've never been very into that and so after high school i went to vocational college and became a seamstress and i was loving it and i was i was actually working as a seamstress for eight years and I was working in a fabric store, so I had substantial um, yarn stash. I still do, even though it's been 10 years um, since I've worked in one or eight or nine. I don't remember. I think maybe eight, maybe eight years. Let's say eight years since I, I um, stopped working in a fabric store. But then something happened when I was... Um, pregnant with my um, first boy. I was in, on a sick leave because I couldn't work. I was having constructions all the time and I was forced to sit down and I was bored. And my sister su suggested me that I will join this Facebook group um, for like stranded color work socks. And I had already like I had done a sock pair here and there, maybe one pair a year. So I did, did have like the basic skills there, but I wasn't, I had these faces when I did knit a bit, but nothing major. And then when she su suggested that and I found the love for color work, um, that's how I started knitting again. And I think it was, a year later when I started my knitting related Instagram account and it was only basically socks in the beginning but then I started um, widening my horizon uh, into garment knitting and that was it like that was it I I really fell in love uh, with that 
and I started designing um, along the way some some point because I was always the one that was changing. I have very clear vision what I want, and if something doesn't match my vision, then I <laughs> change. So I felt like I was always changing and making tweaks to everyone else's patterns. So I started uh, creating my own. The first ones were socks, uh, colorwork socks, and then uh, children's wear because they are quick and quicker to make and to braid. And um, yeah, here I am now. I'm doing all the things and and um, my dream is to become a uh, self-employed uh, knitwear designer at some point, but I know that that's not happening uh, now when my kids are so small and I don't have the time to do that properly. But a person, uh, person's got a dream, right? So I am slowly, slowly working towards my, my goals and my dreams. And um, I'm really happy that I have found my uh, little community here on YouTube. I know that not all of you are in, into my designing, but, but I'm hoping that I'm inspiring you to knit uh, because I do love knitting from other people's patterns as well. So, so yeah, that was a little, little story of how I became a knitter. And uh, I do have two more whips that I want to show you. But before uh, we go into that, I will now give you my um, little gift. So, because I really want to thank you for um, sticking around and encouraging me and supporting my channel and supporting me, I wanted to give you an opportunity to try out uh, any of my patterns. So, use the code PODIVERSARY and you will receive one free pattern uh, from my Ravelry store. You can choose any pattern. They are all uh, up for grabs. So just choose whichever you want. And I will run this uh, offer until, uh, so I will run this offer for three weeks. So all of you who want can grab a pattern uh, from me. So that would be, let's say 15th of May. Until the 15th of May, you can grab one of my patterns for free uh, from my Ravelry store. So thank you so much for subscribing to my channel and um, this is my little thank you. Okay, two more things that I want to show you and the other one is on the floor. I did ask in my uh, previous episode um, about these two patterns, uh, whether I should do the Celeste uh, from Sare Nordlund or the Wild Poppy by um, Jeff Nealon. I ended up uh, asking again on my Instagram and the Celeste Clover got 73% of the votes. There was more than 200 votes. So I listened to my, uh, to my followers and I cast on the Celeste uh, two days ago. Here it is. It's a lot of work, I must tell you. Wow. It's like one million pub bubbles um, <laughs> and lace and folded color and wow. It takes ages. Uh, the yarn I'm using is Novita Woolly Wood. It's a DK weight um, yarn. It's um, 70% tensile and 30% merino wool. Um, if you have done the Celeste before, you know that it has like the, the folded color that you sew um, down. But what I did, I did like a, the crocheted, crocheted cast on, what is, it, what is it called? Like the provisional cast on. Um, because I really didn't want to, you know, sew it down. First you do the cast on and then you sew it down and yada, yada, yada. 
what I've seen other people in other people's projects is that the neckline is kind of loose. Um, the folded collar usually tends to be a bit like uh, on the loose side. So I did take uh, a bit smaller needles on the on the ribbing because I know that it will stretch out. Um, although I'm a tight knitter, I did that on purpose. The pattern suggests uh, three point twenty five millimeter on the on the collar. Um, I did on three, and then it says suggest uh, four for the lace and the body. I had to take four point five to get gauge. So there you can see that I I did go like down a couple of needle sizes, but um, I'm really happy how it turned out. I think it looks very neat. Also from the inside, because I did um do the the provisional cast on. I think it's my preferred um preferred method of doing this this type of collar. I usually don't do the folded over collar because I've I've had issues with the that like laying laying flat. And if you see Sari's picture, it's kind of wide and I didn't really want that. I want my neckline to be like where it should be. Um I actually have to say that now that I've been wearing this uh green sweater there's the theme um <laughs> it has stretched out quite a lot uh so i'm i'm not sure if i if i completely like that it's stretched out so much but if it becomes a problem i put like a little elastic um on the inside so it won't be a problem so apparently i'm very big uh with green <laughs> this green yarn was bought a year ago um with this pattern and now i just started it um i have to say that this pattern takes a long time to make um i'm sure when i reach uh at the end of the yoke then it will fly off the needles or at least it's mindless but at this point I feel like I've put in a lot of hours into this and <laughs> it still doesn't look like much and it's only growing. I'm doing size five, which is 